Welcome to another great free clinic on Virtual Football Clinic. Please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Um, the next speaker is Gunter Brewer from Louisville. Um, Coach Brewer has a huge experience in football, so we're very happy to have him today. So, Coach Brew, there you go. All right. Appreciate it. Well, today I'm going to uh, jump in into what I call situational football. A lot of people talk about it, but actually coach it or, or do it is a, is a different scenario. And I can jump around whenever we need to and, and get to some different things because there's so many scenarios that can win or lose you the game. Uh, the first one I'm going to jump into is an offensive one, which whether it be pro or college, having been in both, you have a situation where the offense uh, runs a play and which was in their favor, but might be reviewed by replay or uh, a situation where defense is going to have a question about it. So what you try to do is get the play off before they either call timeout or review booth kind of gets there. For us, it uh, was a one-word play in, in Philadelphia at the Eagles. Different places I've been, it's always been a, a one-way play. Uh, I mean, a one-word play. But you can formation it how you want to. Our preference was to, to have it in uh, one scenario where you were going to line up in the same formation regardless of personnel. So how that looks, this is uh, the Eagles versus the Chiefs. Uh, it's it's going to be a situation where whether or not it's a first down or not. So uh, you see split safeties, three by one. And I may need to uh, click that box on that reshare, so I may do that after this because it drags a little bit too much. I'll let it run on this play, and then I'll go back and try to reshare this so it doesn't drag as much. You can see Carson Wentz scrambling out, obviously. Okay, whether he dies for the first down, whether he gets it or not, that, that, that'll that be the question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so here's the, here's the next play. I'll pause and go back uh, from, that, from that standpoint. So here's the second play. It's an inside zone. It's a one-word call. Uh, it's to an open end after, after the quarterback, whether he got first down or not. You see the receivers down here at the bottom just getting lined up in a formation. So speed is of the essence. It's not, uh, it's not about getting the best look. It's just about getting it snapped, and, and hopefully, you know, you don't get to review in that. And other, other people that run scenarios like this, I'd love to – to know what their words or what their procedure about that is. You see the defense getting lined up, trying to get there. And it, it was about, obviously you got positive yards there, four or five yards on the inside zone play. Here's a third and 11 scenario. Uh, it's against the Panthers. Obviously it's a throwing down. We're in a, uh, they're in a nickel situation. We got one-on-one -on -one to, the, to the weak side against our X receiver. They're, they're spinning down. We're going to throw the curl to the field. He scoops it, holds it up like he's talked to do, like he should right there, gets the ball to the official. Now, whether or not uh, this ball is going to be caught or not, that's going to be the question. So, again, it's the same scenario of, hey, we're going to hurry to the line, try to get up, run a play before, before they get there, and can either uh, – you see him signaling, no, incomplete, incomplete. Here's the next play right there. You see the chains being moved trying to get it before they get that part under center. Again, it's a three-by-one set for us. Running the inside zone to the open inside, it would be more so a push call for the offensive line guys would be going out right here, identifying who the play side, who the mic is, and trying to get that that way. Here's scenario for uh, with the uh, Patriots, whether this ball is caught or not. This is uh, Jacksonville against them. So now you got a ball down the field, whether or not he's in bounds or whether it's a clean catch or whether he had, you know, it's feet in, whatever you have, you got different guys at that, at that place, whether or not they're going to review it at that particular point, I'll, I'll speed it up a little bit. You'll see a little bit, a little bit different play. Everybody's got their own play at that, at that particular point that they run. So whether you're a no huddle offense or not, everybody's got some kind of two minute offense that they can get to this word or whatever runs, uh, whatever gets them to that point, you see how quick even the film was a snap. They're just running a gut play, uh, almost dead, dead up to center's rear, just everybody mashing in there like a quarterback sneak and just handing it off. 
you know, that, yeah, that may have been first down. You say, why you run that? Well, it's because they, they could have gotten a review and gotten it off before then just taking a chance right. there. Each of, the, each of these situations right. would be a little bit different. All right, church mode. What is church mode? Okay, church mode is whether you want to stay in bounds in a situation is an event that the offense wants to take the clock and the game. This may mean not scoring intentionally or not to score a touchdown intentionally and run more clock and then kick a field goal to win the game. Uh, what it does is it takes the time off the clock so the other team either has little or no chance of scoring not enough time remaining is uh, what we mean by this one. 23-16, the Rams are ahead. Okay, they've got the ball, obviously, in, in the high red zone, hand off a ball in the inside zone. Okay, he gashes it. They're trying to make the tackle. He's wide open. This is Todd Gurley. All right, instead of scoring, he's going to go down at the one or two yard line and now burn, burn the clock, either make them use their timeouts or take the clock and the game depending on where they are at that point. You're going to see here later where, unfortunately, he does a great job here. And, and that one can be hard to teach. Okay. But that's a, a scenario back in the day with uh, Philadelphia and Dallas. You can see it's two minutes on the clock. Uh, now they got, they got first down, uh, timeout situation. Everything's going to run. So either going to burn all the timeouts, make them use it. Of course, the two-minute clock stops one. So those all scenarios you end up winning a game, take the, take the clock and the game in that scenario. Here's the same guy we talked about earlier uh, with Gurley, 27-29. A minute five left to go uh, in the score zone or in the red zone here in a little trips bunch set. Don't hand off the, the pin pull play. He's going to break out in the open at this point, then give himself up, go back into the defender, give himself up there, hold on to the ball and, and take the clock. And that's the same guy that uh, here late in a little bit, I'll show you a, a different one, try to get through some of these, but you, you get the gist of what we're doing here. I'll try to get one that's uh, have thousands of these so they go through. Uh, here's a good one with the college scenario, then I'll go to the bad ones. SC gets it out there. They're, in, they're, in, they're winning the game, got position, wide receiver gives himself up. These scenarios you got to practice on, on your, your days that you're not doing much or, or days in camp that you build them in. You can do them as walkthroughs. You can do them as situations where – you know, you, you don't want to, you just want to make them use their mind more than their legs uh, in, in those situations. So this can win or lose you a game. It, here's the same guy that we, we talked about earlier. Uh, I'll go back to the scenario. Hope I can get the. Uh, okay. So, so Atlanta trailed uh, the lines by two, what face of first and go with a minute to go. The lines had burned all their time out. So all I need to do is run the clock out kick a wing, uh, uh, you know, a pro bowl kicker, just a chip shot at the end. You know, there, there's really the only way they could lose is score a touchdown, give them the ball, and they go down and score, and, you know, you, you can read the rest. But obviously it didn't work out well for the Falcons. They figured found a way to lose. Uh, and here's the scenario, same guy we just saw earlier. No matter how old you are, what year you are, same guy you saw earlier do it. Okay, here's the Raiders. This was a game this year. This receiver is actually a kid I coached in college. It's only two minutes left to go in the game. They're down at this point. Okay, they're trying trying to figure out, uh, you know, what is the scenario? That's the first first uh, inside zone to the left, first play. Okay, as you see now, the uh, clock moves down. I'm over to the next play. Clock moves down a minute 52. It's now I'd skip one. Now it's third and one. They had jumped off sides. There it is. So they jump off sides. Now you got it uh, first, and, first and eight, first and goal with a minute 55. First play, run it up the middle. Get positive yards. Second play in the scenario. Now it's a minute 50, second six in heavy sets. 
There he goes, got an opportunity to score. Instead of scoring, you see he gives himself up. So this is this game was a really strange game because it ended up being like five scenarios into one at the end of the game here. Uh, let me rewind it. You can see the time on the clock. I don't know if you saw this game on TV or not, but it was very interesting. Okay, minute 27. You know, ball on the one right there. They take the knee. He could have burned some more time right here in that. That was one thing we were talking about. He could have burned some more time, kind of like taking a safety and been protected a little bit and uh, just giving some ground and go down, have a guy assigned to it. Of course, the kicker makes the kick. I'll go past that. I just want to show you the clock. So the game's not over to that final tick. There's 19 seconds left to go, which uh, was fourth and four. Get a touchback on the kickoff. Miami gets the ball with uh, 19 seconds left to go, first and 10 on their own 25. Now you got a scenario where defense is in a prevent mode. They got a Tampa two look. The weak side safety decides to not get off the hash with number three working to him. The corners lost his mind at the top. Doesn't chase and sink. Doesn't matter if they throw it underneath. Get a ball in the hole right here. That's my receiver from college. They get the ball at the 40. Okay, all right. Going to get the ball at the 40. Not too bad. Still got plenty of time. But if you watch the quarterback here, what happened with him, it's amazing how uh, Fitzpatrick could make this throw. We got a bad face mask penalty right there. Really bad personal foul. Now that tax on 15. So now we've got a scenario. Now the ball's moved within position with 19 seconds left to go in the game. They move basically length of field with uh, one play and it not being really a trick play, just a bad operation. Okay, herein lies one that we may or may not get to later. So now you've got the game where you feel like, okay, I'm in position to throw a Hail Mary, I mean a uh, kick it kick it and I'm win the game. I may take a shot, but I want to be sure. So I don't want to really take a shot. I just want to burn some time. So instead of dropping back and, and just losing yardage, you're at your you're at your limit for maybe your kick. Sprint out here with protection. Give up much time as you can, then heave ho. Just going to throw the ball out of bounds towards the receiver over his head, uh, you know, until it hits, hits inbounds or they determine that. The clock's still running. Great job here of execution. Uh, another scenario we work all the time with that same thing. You can use it into the game, or you can use it into the half, or, or that point there. Thought they could have taken, you know, maybe another second or two, kicked the game winning field goal. So now you got a scenario where you got your block team out there. Obviously, it's desperation. He kicks it, makes it. Okay, but there's uh, two seconds or one second left to go in the game. So one second left, now you got a kick. So what do you do in your kicking situation? So you're teaching this as far as that goes. Well, expect probably some type of squib. So with the squib now, now you get the rally play where it's desperation, get it, toss it back. Now you got to coach your guys about this one. You had a win way back when when the Titans threw this ball on the side, uh, threw it back to the sideline and, and won, won and lost games that way. So within 19 seconds, you had a lot of scenarios there that could win or lose you the game, okay? Uh, Four-minute mode. So now milking the clock. You want to stay in bounds. You want to take as much time off the clock as possible. You talk to your ball carriers about making sure they secure the ball with two hands, uh, doing everything they have to do. Same thing with the quarterback. Everything you have to do to keep the clock running, but uh, also secure the ball. Uh, different people call it different things. We call it four-minute. You're milking the clock, whatever signal you got there. Okay. So I don't know if you saw this game or not. This was a college game. It was a really good game. Peach Bowl this year with Cincinnati. Had a great year playing Georgia and uh, in Atlanta. Uh, here's an example of the offense not taking the clock down situation. It was uh, – they had the ball. Since he had the ball with the 21-19 and 19 lead with a uh, little under three minutes on the, on the game clock, Georgia had two timeouts. Cincinnati had the ball – and a chance to stay in bounds twice before their first two plays but ran out of bounds and stopped the clock. Uh, they did gain a new set of downs within that and forced Georgia to use their two timeouts, but chose to throw the ball on third down. Okay, It was incomplete, stopped the clock. Since he punted, 
uh, George drove the length of the field to get in field goal range. It went basically no time on the clock, hit the game winner. Okay, clock management issue. You got to figure out sometimes what's worth it going for it, uh, going for the win at that particular point or not. And here's a scenario here, right under, right under three minutes. Got the ball snapped on a zone read with the arrow. Okay, she pulls it, throws it. Really nice job outside. Okay, now got an opportunity to give himself up and doesn't. So he go, goes out of bounds there. So that's the that's first play. Second play, got a little three by one set. Okay, it's unbalanced. Quarterback keeps it on the backside. I know that one's dragging a little bit. Doesn't run out of bounds. Let's see if I can get the film caught up here. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the third play here. He falls a little like two yards short of the first down. Okay, so this is third down. Run the pick play. Got a guy wide open. They bust. Got a guy underneath wide open. DB makes a great play. Recovers at the end. Okay, knocks it out of his hands. So there, there's your case where, you know, like I said, surely Georgia would have changed a few play calls trying to get into position to kick the field goal. But you saw two or three plays there where just if you manage it a little bit, you may be in better shape. Uh, Penn State, another poor example. Uh, they're ahead 21-20, minute 47 in the fourth. They down to one timeout. Okay, uh, guy breaks the line of scrimmage. This is your scenario that, you know, do I, do I church mode it here and not score? Obviously, that's either what was told in the huddle or what was told on the sideline on the timeout, or what the kid, he's looking around, what I do, oh, my goodness, I went too far. You know, they're all celebrating and things of that nature. Uh, you notice the linemen, they must have known, because linemen, like 62, did a little somersault here at the end. Uh, if you saw on the wide copy, like, look at it, and get down. You're supposed to fall down, okay? Obviously, that scenario ended at Penn State, won that, uh, lost that game in another – uh, scenario of two minute or end of the game. This is this is uh, Wake Forest Syracuse overtime. Okay, it's so overtime. Syracuse is ahead. Okay, throws a, throws a tunnel screen. Guy takes it out of his pocket. Now at this point, you say, well, why why would you show this when it's 33 30, 33 30? They win the game. So the game's over at that particular point. They're up in overtime. Syracuse is. So Wake Forest gets their chance in overtime, and the guy takes it up, takes it from the receiver, and the only chance that Wake Forest has is is to punch the ball out okay. and cause offense, cause a fumble. So defensive guy doesn't carry the ball a lot, so he thinks, hey, I want to go score, get my name in the paper. So what he should have done after he got the ball from the receiver, which is a either a, it's really an interception because the ball never hit the ground, he should just fall down. Game's over. They win 33-30. He gives, he gives the other team an opportunity, which if I have time, I'll show some of those, where the ball is intercepted, the other team comes and knocks it out, a la Leon Lett way back in the day, or any, there's thousands of them, and then the other, you know, the offensive team ends up recovering and have another chance to go back in and score. So it's just, just an opportunity there to teach the game at that point, like, you know, yeah, it's great you scored, but you – the game was over. You should have you should have fallen down. You can show the clips of of guys you know not doing well in that scenario. I guess would be the best way to say it. Here was a shootout game with us and Wake Forest. They seem to be in those. It's like 52-55. It's fourth down in this scenario. We've got our uh, backup quarterback in, which that probably had something to do with it. It's a good little play. We're running that same play you just saw earlier that uh, Cincinnati ran. Okay, the zone with the and then pulling the uh, pulling the uh, slasher back out in front right there. So he could have had the opportunity to score right there, which he did. So unfortunately, he should have just gone down right there. We'd been in much better shape at that point. See if we can get these things to stop lagging on us or pay the bill for the uh, for the internet. We'll be all right. All right, milking the clock, staying in bounds. Those are the things we just talked about there of, of how to do that and secure the ball. It's just some Eagles tape here in a four-minute situation of guys taking care of the ball and knowing what to do. It's, it's similar to the church mode uh, or, or milking the clock. 
but you're just in a different different scenario where they're they're just going to protect the ball right there with two hands. Okay, do a good job, fold their tent, give themselves up. So that that's what we mean by that at that particular point. We don't need to we don't need to see all these, but uh, there's some really good ones in here about guys doing a good job of knowing where they were uh, in the field of play. And I've got some scenarios with our us, but I'll kind of kind of go on the other side of that. All right, going to my uh, a receiver one, and this is. This is different than a scenario for a situation in a game. It's more a situation in a play or a plan of escape. As a receiver coach, you're hitting that double move route, uh, defender is beat. So what he's taught, you know, unlike in NFL, it's not at the spot foul. In college, it's, it's a, just a, either 15-yard penalty. Could be defensive holding, could be uh, defensive pass interference, either 10 or 15-yard penalty. So you got to know that coming out. You know that that your route that you're going to run a double move, and if you get the guy to bite, what it, what is your plan of escape at that point? Meaning that I am going to adjust my route on the double move to know that the defender once he bites, you see his demeanor, he jumps outside right here, and I've got to fight through that play strength. Or I'm going to hammer, I'm going to swipe, I'm going to rip, I'm going to swim, I'm going to do something to keep the defender off of me and able me to run the route and instead of just getting a, a penalty or a spot foul, I want to play through it. So that's something that you got to practice with your receivers. There's some different scenarios. Here's the stop and go up at the top of your screen. He's going to run what we call a, a whirly bird type technique where he's going to hitch and then spin. Now with that, he turns his back to the, to the defender, which I like sometimes to do other times it's not as good, but you see the defender here having a, having to grab his low hip, reach out and try to grab his low hip. Well, you know that if he's driving inside, what you're doing right there, and, and you can use your hammer swipe, some scenarios where you can do that. This is the double move that, uh, that we had against uh, Wake Forest. We're going to be here in the slot. So in and back up off, off of the three-man combo. You see the, see the defender try to grab him, ball end up being short. Didn't, didn't really matter at that point, but he got through knowing that we had practiced that the guy, hey, he's going to reach out and grab you. How does the technique of the DB play? You watch all the double moves. You see him right there reaching, grabbing around his hips. You just can't come to the sideline and say, well, coach, he grabbed me. Oh, really? You know, you're not expecting that, or what is your plan for that escape? So that's, that's when we say that, those scenarios in that way right there. That was the corner by three off of our corner read, off of the two double ends, and we're just double moving that, that route right there. That's a pretty popular route, especially in the red zone. We should have just run the corner. We'd been in probably as good or better shape. Good double move route. This is the squeeze set by Indianapolis. Okay, double move. Guy reaches and grabs down here at the bottom. I know the, the, uh, the other route's up at the top, but look in the one down at the bottom here where he's running a hitch and go off the spray down here at the bottom. He's going to spray and run the, the stop and go, and he's going to reach for him right there, reach and grab him. He plays through that. So for those receiver coaches or those three things, make sure you teaching that, you work on that, that relate, release moves happen after the route also. This should have been a penalty. I don't know whether he threw it or not. This one's up top. It's a guy playing through, uh, trying to play through the route. It's a plan of escape, but he did not far enough. When he gets his eyes up, he knows the DB is trying to cut him off there. So he's got to make a better attempt of, of kind of getting through there and seeing. This is Clemson. This one's up at the top. The two down at the bottom do pretty good. The one up at the top is going to run like a hitch and go or a slant and go or a slug on go. The guy's on the low hip. So he's got no chance here of getting clear in the hip. He needs to clear the hip and then put him on the low hip. Uh, on the, he should be on the high side. The DB should be on the low side. We're just the other way around up top here. No chance at that particular point. So that, that's what I mean by that. There's five or six more uh, examples of that, but I want to try to get through some of these others. All right, don't be that guy. You know, what, what, what does that mean? Those are scenarios or situations in which a player does something that is regrettable. It's not very smart, and it's something that will show up on Sports Center 
or on somebody else's highlight tape about doing something that uh, they don't want seen or be done again. So there's, when I was at Philly, there was a thousand of these that we'd rotate each week from scenarios in the league or from over the years. And it's really good way to talk about the rules. What are the rules to show your team, to show your offense, to show your defense, or to show your position group in different scenarios. Uh, this one is a situation where the guy, uh, before he finishes the goal line, and a lot of defensive players do this too. You know, they let go of the ball thinking about the celebration before they ever had a chance to score. All right, so you saw the, the result of that. The announcers, if you couldn't hear them, they were, you know, just talking about the touchdown, and all of a sudden something else goes on while they're in their broadcast here. Uh, it's really strange, but now you see it on the replay That's here. Cool So I'm not sure anybody's had that happen to them before. Uh, that's a pretty embarrassing moment. There's been some a lot, a lot of really good players that have uh, unfortunately done some things like this. This is a kid that uh, plays for the Steelers. Ray Ray McLeod played for Clemson as a, as a punt returner. Feels the ball clean. It's a great job getting up to shoot, setting blocks up, obviously making a kicker miss. Then decides that uh, he wants to let it, let it go before he crosses the goal line. If there's a clear and there's not a, a whistle at this particular point, there's different sets of rules in different places, but, you know, if they pick it up and run with it, like you saw the Utah game, uh, then you can go score with it. If not, they'll blow it dead and they'll get it at the 20 going back the other way. This was a bowl game a couple of years ago. Scenario, quarterback on the zone read, keeps it, gashes it. Besides, he wants to celebrate before he uh, gets to the end zone. I don't know. You can may put it in the chat. I'd be curious if anybody's had it to them personally, or uh, you know, show 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 their team or anything quite like. That. Okay, so that last scenario you saw, I've got miles of tape of this as a defensive player. The special teams play obviously here, but interception or anything else, then decides before crossing the goal line, you know, just just basically shuts it down, either celebrates or thinks he's already there, and the ball gets punched out or knocked out and goes back through, you know, they had a chance to go up 21 right there, 21-14, don't get any points out of it. So that, that one's not good, obviously, okay? Uh, another don't be that guy moment, all right? You got a scenario where extending the ball over the goal line, this is, this is more on jumping over the goal line, whether it be a running back or a quarterback, as opposed to trying to extend the ball uh, another situation I see these as two different, two different scenarios, even though they're the same type, they're, they're just done differently. So you take a look by jumping, uh, you know, over the pile instead of just running like on a, a outside.
So obviously the head coach wasn't very happy. Here's one with uh, Teddy who played here, you know, trying to pick it up, trying to get it and jump up over and extend it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but you got another scenario too. And uh, what the techniques are, the backers punch the ball out before it gets there. You got a turnover going back the other way. The next one is uh, actually another one of our guys uh, who's a pretty good athlete. You got Lamar. And he does actually break the plane here, but you see what happened, knocking that ball back, picking it off. If they don't, that's six points the other way. So obviously it got different views of this from different places where you can kind of see it, but it, it sometimes it's a call play and sometimes guys just do it on their own, but the repercussions of it, you know, aren't real good. Here's a couple with the running backs real quick where they try to dive and stick the ball out. Obviously, it's the difference between the last play of the game uh, than, than not. And you got to know the situation on uh, what it is. You got points or you don't have points. These are just bonehead plays that you got guys that are hired for, you know, paid a lot of money to do this. And you would think they've covered it, which you know they have. Stick the ball out, fumble, and ball's going back the other way. Uh, Put this one on here. This scenario of, of defensive pass interference, and this is a great picture if you can see it clearly, of receiver making an attempt at the ball and the defender obviously not playing the ball. That's pretty common sense. But the point of this picture is that the offensive player has to make a play for the ball earnestly. That I, I had a game, uh, in fact, opening game with uh, Philadelphia and Atlanta where we had a receiver who was a veteran who had a deep ball, and it was no doubt it was pass interference. Wasn't any question. But the problem is that he did not play the ball. So by him not playing the ball or playing through the defender earnestly and uh, trying to get the ball, that they didn't call it. And they didn't call it because of that, not because of the other way. It was like that, just no blood, no foul type scenario. So in, in, in this picture, we, have, we do some drill stuff. And in practice, we talk about too as a – Defender, exact same scenario here, where he's uh, going up to try to get the ball. And we've got we've got to play through him here. That one's, so you need to teach this and talk about it because it's amazing how guys uh, don't, don't do it. We have a big bag with arms, and we make them jump over and obviously try to grab the ball. We call it mossing them. But this is, this is an effort. To me, it's not a great effort. Uh, you want to short, and you really got to give yourself up uh, and go up and get the ball. He did put his arms out, and it probably would have been called. This one was not called uh, in that case. This is against uh, Pittsburgh. Had did a great job defensively of playing man and, and covering people and making these make them make these calls. But the receiver there did not attempt to play the ball. So at that point, if he would have stopped and let the defender run into him, or jump up and make this play for this ball, it would have been called, and that's what the referees talked about afterwards. He should have high-pointed that ball for one, and two, he should have let the guy play through him at that particular point. More so like uh, this one down here at the bottom with the coach defender there. You see the receiver, that's Chark from LSU, a rookie season. He's playing through the defender to get to the ball. So there's different ways of doing that. It's not just jumping up. Sometimes it's just playing underneath here. He makes that attempt at that ball. That's one that would not have been called if he had just stayed outside and let that guy run him down the rail. This one's more clear cut. Got Foles with the little fade ball. Now you see the, the receiver turn, open his shoulders, give a little, uh, little bit of acting on it but the defender has his hands in his chest. So therefore it's an easy call for the, for the referee at that point. Those are the ones that you, you really got to have. NFL, it moves it to the point, the spot of the, of the foul. So it's, it's even better. So right there, you got to do a little bit of acting right there in that, in that scenario, do a, do a good job of that. All right, next scenario we have is uh, where we talked about earlier. Now we talked about it, extending the ball 
across the goal line. And where does it come out? You know, it's a touchback at that point if it's a fumble and different scenarios, when to do it and when not to do it. Okay, so those are those are ones that the Indiana scenario is, is a good one to talk about because it's the last play of the game. It's overtime. They're going for two to win it instead of kicking the extra point to tie it. Uh, now, he, that's the only way this this cat can get in as far as where he is from the from – the, I don't know if you saw this game, but it was really a great football game. He's scrambling out, can't get it. Now he's going to tuck it and run it. It's from the four-yard line, extends it with the outside hand, okay, breaks the plane, gets to the pylon. This is a great decision by him. There's no other choice, in my opinion. Now, the thing he's got to do there is when you're coaching this up is he's got to keep his knees above the ground. Any knee hits, obviously, it's down. So go back, review, and see where that knee hits. So he's got to stay parallel for one. So he's got to stay up above the ground, and he's got to get that ball to that pylon or just inside. They called it a touchdown or a two-point conversion, so they didn't reverse it. If it would have probably been called the other way, they probably would have left that there. Was, uh, the film was so hard to see. Here's a situation where not a good decision. Uh, it's 21-21, third quarter. Guy breaks out in the open. All of them want to score. Everybody who touches the ball wants to get in the end zone, get it so close, then their decision-making process becomes more about me than about we. Uh, this is a we decision. Ball's out of his hands. He's trying to grab it with both hands to extend it. Not smart. Okay, here's a situation where you got your quarterback uh, on a scramble doing the same type scenario, three by one set, backs off set, gets flushed out of the pocket, makes a decision to run, he's going to tuck it, thinks he can get in, extends the ball out, he goes through the end zone and out of the end zone. This was ruled, ruled a touchback, not, not, not what you want. It needs to be the last play forever to be able to do something like this and put yourself in that scenario. This is a touchback in any league. Ball's out, and he's got his inside hand, probably instead of his outside hand for whatever, whatever decision that goes. So as you see the clock there, it's, it's uh, they can get points here. It's third down. They can get points here. They're in great position. He decides to jump from the two or three, put the ball out. Ball comes out, goes out. Uh, instead of if it goes out of bounds, you're fine. But it goes through the end zone and out of bounds there, you're not fine. A lot of misdirection there. See the ball's out. Don't get points. Same thing here. A little speed sweep, can't get to the edge, can't get points. Turnover. Touchback. Okay, this one's kind of eclectic or unique. This has uh, happened to the Saints receiver this year and basically missed the whole year. Uh, it's kind of weird, but it happens. We teach it, and you don't get to see it a whole lot, but the situation here where you see it where a guy gets rolled up on, it doesn't have to be just a receiver. We talk about uh, lift your feet, pick up your feet, okay? And you may fall on the pile and be embarrassing, but that's okay. If you get caught up in that pile, it's no fun. You can tear, uh, tear knees up. In his case, he tore her ankle up, high ankle sprain, wasn't good. Okay, so it's fourth quarter, two minutes, got the game under control. He's at the top left. He's looking back. He's seeing what's going on. Okay, just kind of hanging out. And all of a sudden, bam, 31 gets un underneath him. Okay, you see him hobbling off. Tight copy, bam. Gets the ankle caught up underneath, can't kick it out in time. You see these piles happen all the time, but it's just with receivers here. See him get hit from the back. You see what happens to his back. You see what happens to his legs and see what happens to his knees. If you can feel it coming, so what's the answer? I'll show you here in just a second. You got to kick your legs up and out so that way you don't get them caught underneath. Here's a scenario with us against Georgia Tech. It actually happened a couple of times here in this game.
right there. So right here at the end, you'll see number one on the outside who's a potential first round pick. Okay, kick, kick his knees up right there. Yeah, I'll go to, to another one, same year, same game. I mean, here's this up top in the slot. You get a better copy of this one. Hey. Okay. Okay, so you see this one's a little bit more uh, more defined on what's going on. You kind of see him hop up out the way right there. That's kind of that's kind of that scenario. It's another one here where he kicks his feet up here at the end. It's it's very eclectic, but it does happen in that, in that scenario where you get some of those uh, clock clock spiking it. Hurry to the line of scrimmage. You know you line up as fast as possible. You can have. Uh, Pre-snap, just get up there, get set. Legal formation is everybody on the ball in college and pro. You've got to be in a legal formation. This is uh, illegal in, in our college, but illegal in the NFL. So you have different scenarios right there, how that sets up. Uh, just practicing on the set right there. So they should be in good shape right there with that one. You have some, some different ones.